Yo, what's good, y'all boys? It's your boy Frankie, and I'm back for another reaction today, man. Just want to say thank you for the love that y'all been showing on the last reaction videos, man. Y'all seem to really be liking it, so we're going to keep them coming. So this one, man, this is one I've been putting off. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, man. Drake is one of my favorite artists, bro. If not my top favorite artist, depending on who drops and, and who drops when and stuff like that. But Drake is definitely in my top three. And like I said in the last video, unless you live under a rock, Y'all saw what happened between Drake and Kendrick, man. And me being a Drake fan, I can openly say that Kendrick lost the beef. Now, if we get down into it, yeah, there's there's certain things I can say Drake did better than Kendrick or Kendrick did better than Drake. But to me, it all came down to Kendrick beating Drake at his own game. Drake, he wins beefs by getting the internet or the internet world, rather, on his side. Kendrick did that when he dropped like that. Or not like that, when he dropped not like us. So, anyways, Kendrick won. But since then, man, it has just been a Drake hate train, bro. I never realized how many people hated Drake. I'm 100% convinced that there are more Drake haters than there are Drake fans. I'm convinced that there are more Drake haters than there are Kendrick Lamar fans. And that's why we saying what we saying. So just to give you a little backstory, all the beef records that Drake dropped on, on YouTube, they got way more dislikes than they do likes. Like anything get remotely dealing with Drake on the internet, you will see Kendrick won. You will see Drake lost. You will see all kind of stuff. BBL, Drizzy, everything is going crazy. So Drake did something else that now us Drake fans have to try to defend. Now, me as a grown man, I'm not defending another grown man because Drake ain't paying me. He don't know me, and I don't know Drake. I just like his music, and I keep it at that. I'm not a super stan, super fan, super man like a lot of these people are. But anyways, Jamari, my daughter Jamari, dropped another video. Shout out to Jamari with another W video, man. So he's talking about... Drake embarrassed himself again. I don't exactly know what he's going to say, but I'm going to do it again, Chad and Cat, man. Let's get right into it. So the last couple of weeks have been tough for both Drake and his fans. After he decided to officially wave the white flag in his beef against Kendrick Lamar, right he has so. still been somewhat <laughs> active. First, people saw him out in the Turks partying, which is hilarious considering this line from Meet the Grams. Of course, he also had the Twitter Riddler and his cryptic messages that he shared, along with some of Drake's belongings he allegedly possessed. And yes, I know the journalist Christopher Alvarez now claims. Hold on, let me go back. Alright, so I had to go back to this because when I first saw this, the internet does a great job at posting things without context. I saw this picture with Drake and this individual who turns out to be a journalist now. I ain't trying to I ain't trying to go down there where it's hot at, but like when I saw this picture, I'm like, there's no way Drake was. I, my mind went to he was, you know, involved with this individual just because they posted with no context. Come to find out, dude was a journalist. He just wanted to get Drake's autograph, so he ended up showing up at Drake's hotel. That was cool. But what the point I wanted to make is is like he's talking about, or a lot of people were talking about like these items that Drake belonged to Drake. I don't understand. Like, okay, it's a medication, it's a shirt, it, it's pretty much stuff proving that it it's Drake's like medication for Ozempic and stuff like that. I, I, for me, what does that have to do with rap? Like at, at what point are we literally just trying to like, what, I guess what is the point behind all this? It's just like, why is there so much Drake hate and why do I as a consumer or as the internet based fan base, why do we care what medication Drake's taking? Why do I care what medication he takes as if it directly affects the music he puts out? Like, it really doesn't. Like, I don't understand what the angle was all, I mean, what the angle was for all of this. Like, it was very cryptic. It was very weird. Like, it's a lot of eeriness around this. But when I saw that picture of him with that journalist, brother, I got to tell you, it was like, what, what is, what was, what was the point of that? But anyways, let me back to the video belongings he allegedly possessed and yes i know the journalist Wasn't christopher alvarez now claims that drake did no wrong that night but the more i think about it the stranger it sounds for drake to want to hang out with this guy of all people Why is at 3 a.m in his hotel room <laughs> where christopher claims that drake played him some unheard beats not even songs just beats which Drake doesn't even make beats. I don't know, the story is just not adding up to me. Regardless, in an attempt to pop back out and silence the critics, Drake did come back with a feature on Sexy Red's new album, specifically on the song, You My Everything. And I have to say, in listening to her part of the song, I think Miss Red might have damaged my brain permanently. I mean, her performance here is just straight up garbage. Brother, that song was is probably the worst song like overall that I have ever heard. 
I I don't understand how Sexy Red is famous. I don't know. If, if anybody is an industry plant, I'm going to have to go ahead and point all sides to Sexy Red. Like, to me, I feel like she's only as popular as she is, one, because she was put in the right rooms with certain specific people. But also, two, she portrays an image of black women that I feel like the world wants to see. Like, that is not the normal. Like, that's not how black people are. It's not how black women are. But, of course, the world wants to push that narrative. That's what I think. That's why I think she's an industry plan. But the song was terrible. Absolutely hot garbage. Like, I'm talking about way worse than Soul Train. I'm like, what do you say <laughs> fuck me for? <laughs> now, in his feature, Drake attempts to silence the haters and to diffuse the ever-growing buzz around the first <laughs> and greatest diss beat of all time, Metro Boomin's BBL Drizzy. Now here you get the same bullshit Drake that we've gotten over the last couple of years. Oh my God, bro. Lazy lines about having sex and bars about the tough guys in his entourage. But this one's gotta be my favorite. Soon as this shit get resolved, I'll turn librarian for you. I'm booking that shit. Why? <laughs> and here's where he tries to reclaim his status as the true BBO god. Sampling the record itself and saying, me and the surgeon got history. I changed a lot of girls' lives for real. They need a new body to hit me. Hey, BBO Drizzy, they want a new body. They asked me for it. The last one, Jung, he did it for free because I sent so many past ones for him. So, he To me, I thought it was like a clever tactic in the sense of him hopping on the beat. I didn't think it was like embarrassing or anything because like for one, I feel like now we're holding Drake to a different standard because how many other rappers are talking about buying girls' bodies? All of them. How many other rappers are talking about getting girls' BBLs? All of them. So I feel like it was it was an interesting thing for him to do. Now, the song with Sexy Red, the song as a whole, that's embarrassing, I think, because you hid this verse. You hid this, you know, kind of response in a way, indirect response. It's kind of like a subtweet, if you will, right? You hid it behind a terrible song. Nine times out of ten, no one's listening to that entire song just to get to your part. Like, if anything, if y'all like me, y'all probably turn the song on, listen to it for the first maybe minute probably 30 seconds I was like all right where drake part at because it's garbage but to me i feel like if you wanted to have an actual response or to actually make a track kind of trying to claim the bbl drizzy beat back like it was weird in the way he did it, it was kind of an l move because you hit it on a song that's horrible i feel like if he was gonna do that he should have just put out a freestyle over bbl drizzy if that's the case but i feel like it's not fair the what i went on to say it's not fair to kind of hold his content of the the verse towards him like that's nothing against him every rapper does that so now why is it weird for drake to say he bought a girl a body i don't know i feel like we're picking and choosing what we what we like and what we don't like i feel like we here drake is saying yes i am indeed the bbo god because yes i've likely spent millions of dollars getting various surgeries for various women i mean at this point drake is looking at these chicks like build a bitch apparently in this way, I guess Drake tries to divert the joke on himself into a W. All I know is that stupid BBL Drizzy hook has lived rent-free in my head for weeks. Facts. And the fact that people were dissing Facts. him in a thousand different languages was just hilarious. That's insane. W tactic, w, w tactic by Metro Boomin, though. Like, hey, give me the best verse. That, that's funny, though. That's funny. Overall, this song still makes my ears bleed, at least for the first two minutes. But Drake's flow really is great here. I do have to admit, though, I find it hilarious that he keeps fulfilling prophecy after prophecy. When I see you stand by sexy red, I believe you see two bad bitches. Even the biggest Drake nut gargler has to admit that the optics of this are hilarious. Now, more recently, a ghost from Drake's past has revealed its ugly head once again. Or should I say ghost riders? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I remember that interview. Back in 2015, Drake would famously destroy the then very respected Meek Mill in a rap battle. He took down the dude from the streets who was known for getting hyped on the mic, releasing Charged Up and then the hit record back to back in the matter of a week. Drake crushed any chance that Meek might have had by hitting him in his most vulnerable spot. I remember back then, I had just left off to college, and when I heard back-to-back -back playing at house parties and on the radio, I said, holy shit, my guy Meek is cooked. Facts. He tried to come back, 
I tried to hype up his responses to my friends, but it did not matter. Everything about Back to Back was perfectly strategized. Even the artwork for the song. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I think Kendrick won this beef because he won the internet. At the end of the day, it is sad to say it has nothing to do with lyrical content. It has nothing to do with having factual statements within your song. If the songs sound good and the internet like it and it's memeable and it's trending, you won. And that's why I think Kendrick, that's why I know Kendrick won this beef. But let's get back into it. Song directly referencing the walk-off home run in Game 6 of the 1993 World Series hit by Joe Carter was so well planned. For those of you that don't know, that home run propelled the Blue Jays to back-to-back -back championships. Drake had entire crowds of people saying lines like, <laughs> That was a crazy time. Alluding to Meek's then relationship with a much bigger entertainer than himself, Nicki Minaj. At the time, his status as her boyfriend was eclipsing his status as a rapper. Don't get me. This ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but it, <laughs> I heard, I saw a, a real quick, a little meme on Instagram. It was like, uh, Meek Mill left Nicki Minaj so he could be with Diddy. Me wrong, he was still dropping good music, but he was becoming more known for being Nicki's boyfriend more than he was for being Meek Mill, which is something a man is obviously going to be clowned for. This whole song is layered with references that emasculate Meek, who was known for his tough guy gangster image and ferocious delivery in his songs. For Drake to drop a radio hit on his head through a diss record is something that we had not seen Facts. for a very long time. And this really got him a lot of credit as an MC and he really shed the soft R&B Marvin's Room guy label. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, why do I bring this up today? Well, first off, let's just acknowledge that what Kendrick did to Drake recently is exactly what Drake had done to Meek Facts. almost a decade ago. Facts. Because just like Drake recently, Meek actually put out some decent records of his own during that beef, dropping Wanna Know, War Pain, and Pray For Him. Three great records that got completely eclipsed by Back to Back. Mm -hmm. In these songs, he talks about how Drake is an inauthentic artist, even calling him the new Millie Vanilli. Was it Quinn Miller? <laughs> Referencing an R&B duo who infamously failed when it became public That's knowledge. Wild, brother. Are these micros? What is this? Is a real group? And they got Grammys? Oh no, Millie Vanilli. I ain't never heard of them that they weren't actually singing a single note on their hit album. But in the end, it did not matter. Meek could have dropped the most scathing record of all time, and no one would have cared because the public perception was that Drake had already won. Does any of that sound familiar to you guys? Like mm -hmm. Kendrick just got two platinum records calling him a PDF file. And just like Drake platinum? recently, Meek seemingly went into this battle with no strategy. And to me, in the end, that's why they both lost. Now, to Meek's credit, during this beef, he did expose the most glaring kink in Drake's armor at the time. And that's the fact that he had gotten a lot of quote-unquote help from Ghost Riders writing some of his biggest songs. There is a reason that the term OVO sweatshop was coined at this time. <laughs> as people began to speculate that Drake would use his record label as a guise to bring in talent, suck them dry for inspiration and ideas, mm -hmm. and essentially sign his name on the top of their homework, and really leave them even worse than they were before they met him. You're not an artist anymore, little guy. You make my hits now, pussy. Meek Mill <laughs> called him out on record to That's give wild. Quentin Miller his due credit for his work on If You Read This Is Too Late. And even tweeted out, stop comparing Drake to me too. He don't write his own raps. That's why he ain't tweet my album because we found out. Following this beef, reference tracks to several Drake songs would be released. People were shocked as they heard Quentin rap melodies and choruses from songs like Rico, mm. Ten Bands, Started From The Bottom, and Know Yourself. Other reference tracks would be released. What do y'all think, chat? Like, <laughs> What do y'all think? If a rapper doesn't write his own music, his own raps, or if he's using a reference track, do y'all think it matters? Does it hurt the credibility of the song? I'm going to personally say it does. Now, there's one thing I get when you've been in a rap game for 20 years or whatever. Like, okay, you're going to need inspiration. And when an artist like Drake, you do multiple styles of music, so I get that. But for me, rap, if, if we're thinking about it, like, let's use a prime example of Lil Wayne. 
Lil Wayne has never written his own thing. Now, granted, Lil Wayne is a one of one type of individual, but we could use him as an example, right? You can have a successful career for multiple decades without having to reference somebody else's idea on songs. Now, yes, Drake give these people credit on the writer's credit. They get paid, whatever the woo woo woo. But to me, it's just like you, if I write a song, whole melody, whole cadence, whole flow, and then let's say half of it I'm mumbling, but half of it, like I got the hook on there. If that's the case, just let me do the hook. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I'm Drake, let the person who did the reference track do the hook, especially if it's somebody like Party Next Door, which I'm sure he's about to talk about. Like, I get it. If Quentin Miller references something for you, and he sounds, let's be honest, if Quentin Miller had to release them songs, we would not have listened to him. Quentin Miller does not have a listenable voice. Like, it doesn't sound good when he raps it. Of course, Drake has a more professional voice when it came to it. But to me, I feel like, if it's a singing song or more of a club record or something to dance to, that's fine. Get all the references you want. Get all the help you want. Because at the end of the day, we're not listening to that for lyrical content. But if you're doing it on a song that's supposed to have us engaged and trying to break down your bars, I feel like that's worse. Like, for instance, if we come to find out Drake didn't write back to back, or even more recent, we find out Drake didn't write Family Matters, right? To me, I feel like Family Matters is probably the best song to come out of the diss. Well, no, I might have Euphoria on top of that. But let's just say Family Matters, right? Come to find out Drake didn't write that to me as a Drake fan, like that's it. Like you when it's time for you to go to war with that pen and you got somebody else referencing and writing something for you, I feel like that's when it really hurts your career. But all these party songs that they don't really matter, it's just songs to kind of get the vibe going. I feel like it doesn't matter. Y'all let me know though. What y'all think? He's from Party Next Door for the song's company, Legends, and You With Me. Man, imagine this is your dream to write for a massive artist like Drake, and in the end, you don't even get paid for your contribution. I never got a publishing check off of any Drake songs. Whoa. Regardless, the ghostwriter allegations had cooled off for a very long time after this. Drake, of course, went on to drop a ton of hits and several albums. <laughs> But now the ghost of the past is seemingly back as the reference tracks have leaked for Mob Ties, Ratchet Happy Birthday, and Jumbotron shit poppin'. Specifically, I do want to hone in on Mob Ties yeah. here because, well, Ratchet Happy Birthday fucking sucks. And Mob Ties by many is considered to be a classic Drake song, as many felt it was a response to Pusha right. T. Just Thanks. listen to how his biggest fans feel about it. <laughs> but I did hear about that maybe he got some help on Mob Ties, and I... I Bro, Act be glazing this man, bro. I, Drake must be paying Act. Because, like, I'm a Drake fan. Don't I, lie, Mob I'm a Drake fan. I don't defend this man nearly as hard as Act. Ties was a song that I felt that that was Drake with his back against the wall. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, Drake here, if he right, it, fe it felt a way. I love the song. Yeah, like that, I would be like, mm, that would hurt my heart. What's one of our favorite songs, Mavi, now? Sick of these niggas. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. I didn't have mob ties. Oh, I'm sick I'm of these niggas. Oh, hire some help. Yeah. Get rid of these niggas. <laughs> but now look we're at his face, out though. Hire oh, some help. Oh, yeah. Get rid of Ah, uh, look at his face. Sick of these niggas. Bro, tell me that's not the face of somebody who know they didn't write that, bro. Look at his face, bro. Bro, that's, that's the look you get. <laughs> Let's say it's Valentine's Day. And somebody accidentally gets some flowers they bought for their girl to accidentally deliver to your crib. And you just pretend like they're yours. And she, oh, thank you, baby. you like, yeah. Like, that's what his face looked like. Tell me not, bro. Like, but I agree 100% what they saying. Because a song like Mob Ties, to the point I was making earlier, the song is supposed to be a lyrical battle. Like, we listen to this like, oh, yeah, okay. He talking about Pusha T on this bar. He talking about uh, The weekend on this bar. Coming to find out you ain't write it? Like, it's just, it, it, it creates so much, like, doubt for anything else that you've put out. Now, I'm not saying any race is his career, but, man, it's, the allegations going to be with you for a long time, brother, unless you just go live on Twitch for every song you make from now on, like, by yourself type. I'll hire some help. Yeah, get rid of you niggas. <laughs> but now we're finding out that an artist named Vori is allegedly the man behind Mob Ties. The flow, the cadence, everything is mapped out on this reference track. Now, should we be surprised by this? Absolutely not. But it does just show yet another prophecy coming true. Like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he yeah, acts tough. tough. And now we're finding out that he didn't even write his most infamous tough guy anthem. Now, in any other mm. genre, I don't think many people would give a single shit. 
But in rap, this has always been considered a cardinal mm -hmm. sin. And for someone That's... who has claimed over and over again that he is the best rapper in the world with the best pen, well, people find it comical. And listen, guys, I love many Drake songs. I spent many years and had many good times listening to Drake. He has several classic albums to me, and he is arguably the greatest entertainer of my generation. But somewhere yeah. around 2017, I stopped checking in on his music. I think Scorpion was the first record I really didn't enjoy. And unfortunately, for Drake, he just went up against the most authentic artist I've ever seen when it comes to representing where he is from and how he is raised. And when you stack that up against a manufactured mega artist who seemingly has no boundaries as to which flow or style he might steal next, he was really fighting an uphill battle. And coming in with no strategy at all was just a horrible decision. Like he went from begging Kendrick to drop to saying, oh well, well that was just a fun <laughs> little sparring session. Like he got cooked to the point That's that wild. almost a month later, Drake's biggest fanboys are still scrambling and crying over this massive L. Price, is it beyond easy to trigger them at this point? But y'all let me know what you guys think about this whole situation down below. As always, also want to thank you guys. Again, again, shout out to Mari. W video, bro. Like, definitely W video. I didn't agree with, I agree with like 99% of the things he said. But like, with the song like Mob Ties, I wouldn't say it's one of his hardest anthems. Or what did he call it? Like, hardest tough guy anthems or something like that. I don't agree with that technically, like 100%. But it's definitely one of those songs where, like, when it came out, the timing and everything on that was just like, okay, yeah, Drake's talking about Pusha T. Like, it was around all the beef. It was the first album he dropped since that whole beef. And to come to find out you didn't write it, brother, is just like, bro, what else didn't you write? You know, it's, I feel like it's only a matter of time before we find out. It's like one of them songs, like, oh, man, bro, what if he, like, again, what if he didn't write one of the songs on this beef? What if he didn't write Back to Back? What if he didn't write Charged Up? You know what I'm saying? One of my favorite songs from back then is Summer 16. I'm out here looking for revenge all Summer 16. Like, come to find out he didn't make that song either. I think that was on the Scorpion album, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, man. I will say, like, in the last five, six years, it's been really hard to be a public Drake fan in the sense of, like, the music's great, but just the antics, the painting the fingernails, the beads in the hair, the, the duck faces, and the... Bro is moving real zesty, real, real zesty, man. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that boy. I'm looking forward to some more music from him, but, like, I think he just needs to leave the internet alone, make the music, drop the music. You still going to go platinum. You still going to do 400-something thousand because it's Drake. Let's be honest. No one, I ain't going to say no one, but I haven't really heard anybody saying Drake's the best rapper. Drake is the best entertainer of my generation, 100%. Look at the accolades. Like, we can't, no one can deny that you can't take that away from Drake. He is the best entertainer, meaning his discography as a whole, all the pop records, all the singing, everything, right? But as a rapper, I personally never put him as the best rapper. That's why I think we said we had a big three, right? Of course, he's in the big three with J. Cole and Kendrick. Everybody has always said Kendrick has the best pen. Arguably, I'm going to say J. Cole has the best pen, but that could go either way. But Drake makes the best music. Um, but anyways, that's enough yatting and chatting for me, man. It's a short video. Again, shout out Jamari. I'll link the original video in the description. Also, I live stream on Twitch every day. Um, if y'all want to come check me out, man, go follow me over there. Turn on the notifications for whenever I go live. And uh, that's enough yatting, chatting, and catting for me, man. I hope y'all had a Frankie day. I know I did, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Later, later.